Chapter 7 is titled Analytic Trigonometry. In this chapter, we'll look at a variety of identities and definitions and relationships and use them to evaluate parts of a triangle. In 7.1, we're going to look at our fundamental identities once again. Notice we have our set of reciprocal identities, we have our Pythagorean identities, and then we have those quotient identities. Those we've all seen before. We have a new set of identities called odd-even identities, or even-odd. What this means is if you have a negative rotation, which would be a clockwise rotation, it can affect your positive or negative output value just depending on which trig function you're using. For example, if sine rotates in a clockwise direction, that would be the same as the negative version going in a counterclockwise direction. We'll use the even-odd identities for a few things, but they're not quite as common as the identities up above. Finally, we have co-function relationships over on the right, where if you take 90 or pi over 2 minus your angle, those are complementary with an E, not an I. Complementary meaning adding up to 90 or 180 or 90 or pi over 2 radians. I think in the first chapter we had them as 90 minus theta. Now they keep them as pi over 2 minus theta, which means the same thing. Sine is the cofunction for cosine. Tangent and cotangent, secant and cosecant. Anytime we see any of these definitions, we can substitute the cofunction in its place. As you look at these, we're going to do a lot of manipulating for some of these identities. For example, if you see 1 minus cosine squared, that's kind of an interpretation of this Pythagorean identity up above. 1 minus cosine squared would be the same as sine squared. Now that's true, but the second statement, if you took 1 minus cosine, that actually does not equal sine. So we can't square root when there's addition or subtraction. Okay, can't take the square root when there's addition, that's when, oof da. let's fix that quick, when there's addition or subtraction. Something to be careful of as we do some simplifying in this chapter. Let's go back to that identity. Sine squared plus cosine squared equals one. That's one of our Pythagorean identities up above. What I want you to do is simply pause the video and rewrite this identity as many ways as possible. Here's what I mean. If we look at that example up above, one way to rewrite this identity would be to say one minus cosine squared equals sine squared. Okay, now pause the video and see how many ways you could do the same thing, getting different answers on one side or the other in the equation. Here are some ideas that I came up with. Similar to that first one, one minus cosine squared is equal to sine squared of theta, we could move the sine squared over and do the same thing. One minus sine squared theta would equal cosine squared. And then if I take cosine and move the one over, cosine squared theta minus one, that means we'd have to move sine squared to the other side by making it negative. Sine squared theta minus one would then also give us negative cosine squared theta. So just rewriting the identity as many ways as possible. When simplifying, you may need to factor or rewrite an identity. We'll factor with trig terms and then we'll use our identities and maybe transfer things from one side of the equation to the other. There may also be times when we need to find common denominators. And we'll do all of that with trig terms. Your goal, and we've talked about this before, when simplifying, is to reduce down to one term or number. No fractions, no adding or subtracting, just one term or number in your final answer. Now another option in the directions, instead of simplifying, you may be asked to simply rewrite an expression. 
Once again, you might have to factor. And then you would have more than one term in your answer. It'll be particular to your directions. All right, let's give some of these a try. So you may need to flip back and forth, sorry about that, to identify which trig expressions can help you simplify these expressions. When we're asked to simplify, we want one trig term in our final answer. So let's take a look at example A. Sine B times cotangent B. If we have sine times cotangent, what we want to try to do is find a connection using our identities. Now the reciprocal identities aren't going to be useful because the reciprocal for sine is cosecant. And cosecant and cotangent don't have anything in common unless you're squaring them. So let's leave sine B as is. And now let's think about cotangent. We could rewrite cotangent as 1 over tangent, but again, not really helpful with sine. Looking at the quotient identities, I see that we can rewrite cotangent as cosine over sine, just writing it as a fraction. Thinking of sine as sine over 1, now we're just multiplying the terms together. If there's a sine in the numerator and denominator, they would cancel out, leaving us with cosine b over 1, which is the same as cosine b. There's one trig term in our final answer. Let's try the next one. Cosecant squared a minus 1. Taking a look at all the identities on the other page, when I see cosecant squared minus 1, that leads me to the Pythagorean identities. I notice that 1 plus cotangent squared is equal to cosecant squared. But we have the order cosecant squared a minus 1, which means we've rewritten that identity by moving 1 to the other side. If we have cosecant squared a minus 1, that's going to be equivalent to cotangent squared. Now we have to make sure our angle matches. Cosecant squared a minus 1 is going to equal cotangent squared a. So we're squaring the cotangent term for angle a. All right, let's try one more. Tangent of pi over 2 minus theta times secant theta. Taking a look at that first term, we're not going to distribute it in. That's an example of a co-function relationship. And tangent's co-function is cotangent. Therefore, that entire first part of the expression, tangent pi over 2 minus theta, is equivalent to cotangent theta. And then what we're doing is multiplying that by secant theta. And now to try to get them to match. Cotangent and secant, I don't see anything on my identities that's going to help us with those two together. However, cotangent does have a cosine and sine reference, and secant is the reciprocal of cosine. We can actually rewrite both of them. Cotangent is equivalent to cosine over sine. And secant is the reciprocal of cosine. Now I put this one on here specifically from the last chapter. When we had problems like this before, and we canceled out the cosine on the top and the cosine on the bottom, I had the majority of students say that that just equals plain sine, and they were done. But if you look at where sine is located, it's not in the numerator being multiplied to 1, it's in the denominator. And that means 1 is technically by itself at this point, and sine is on the bottom. With sine in the denominator, we're still not done. We can have just one trig term with no fractions in our final answer. Recognizing though that 1 over sine is the reciprocal of cosecant. And that puts that up in the numerator. And there's your simplified expression. Now we'll talk about the rest of our examples from 7.1 tomorrow in class.